Well, good evening, Macon Baptist Church, and it's so good to be with you on this Wednesday evening. This is our midweek uh, prayer time and Bible study, and I'm so thankful to uh, be with you this evening and uh, have some time to just spend together in God's Word. So uh, I hope that uh, that uh, something that we uh, talk about tonight, something that uh, that I share, may be uh, helpful to you along the way this week and encouraging to you. And um, we'll just give God all the Praise and the glory for everything that he accomplishes uh, through our time together this evening. All right. So let's begin our time together uh, by uh, reminding you uh, prayers, uh, prayer time. Uh, please uh, call us with your prayer concerns. Please call me uh, the church or church office. You can call me uh, if you have a, a prayer concern or a prayer list update. Uh, we need to know those things. If you would, please let us know here at the church office. And uh, we can uh, update uh, those names, take off, add on, change to praise if we need to, uh, because uh, God is always working uh, in uh, in the things of his people. So, uh, again, let us know here at the church so we know how to pray for those things and uh, let us know um, about praises and those things. And we, we can not only will we know it, but then we can also participate in uh, those things, too, in the prayers. Uh, and, and uplifting and uh, and those things and we be will be uh, will be uh, privileged to to be able to be part of your prayer life. All right. So as we begin our time together, I, I know uh, there's a, a couple of things I'd like to remind you about too. Uh, Saturday, don't forget Saturday, uh, 9:30. We're gonna meet here at the church and get ready. We're gonna do a a trash pickup. This is for Keep America Beautiful. Uh, we're going to go from city limit sign to city limit sign and try to pick up any uh, debris on 158 as well as on Church Street uh, here in uh, Macon, uh, uh, in the city limits of Macon. So uh, if you got a pickup stick, bring your pickup sticks. We've got a few. Uh, we've got gloves. We've got trash bags. Um, we have a few vests. If you happen to have a vest, then please uh, bring your vest. Uh, we've got some, but we might not have enough for everybody because we want everybody to be safe, okay? So uh, we'll try to get all that covered, but uh, we look forward to that. Be here at 930. Look, if you signed up on the sheet, I got you. If you hadn't signed up on the sheet, I need you to call the church and let me know that you're coming because we're going to have sandwiches from Subway when we get finished. So we need to, we're trying to plan ahead so we know how to prepare uh, for that order with Subway. So please, uh, please give us a call uh, if you didn't sign up, so we can get you on the prayer uh, on the prayer sheet, on the sign up sheet, and uh, we know that you'll be here. Okay, we look forward to that time on Saturday, nine thirty. We get quick, uh, started as quick as we can, and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll go over the game plan when we get everybody together. Okay, Sunday, uh, John Riddle is our prospective youth and children's pastor, past uh, children and youth pastor. Uh, perspective uh, that we would like to uh, the youth and uh, the youth and children's pastor search committee would like to bring uh, before the church to to meet uh, and to uh, hear on Sunday morning. He'll be bringing the eleven o'clock uh, uh, service message and uh, give you an opportunity to see him and meet him. And him and his wife are going to be here with us. And then after the service on uh, Sunday morning. That afternoon at 3.30, we're going to meet again, and uh, we'll be in the fellowship hall. This will be kind of a time of uh, question and answers, meet and greet, uh, something a little more casual than uh, than uh, that 11 o'clock service. So you'll have a little more time to just ask some questions if you've got specific questions and, and that type of thing. Uh, so uh, don't forget that. Mark that on your calendar. We hope that uh, we'll have a big crowd. We want a good-sized crowd to be here to we hope that folks are excited about this. I know the Pastor Search Committee is extremely excited about it. So uh, please plan on that. 11 o'clock service. John Riddle's going to be bringing the message. He's our prospective uh, youth and children's uh, pastor from the Pastor Search Committee for your consideration uh, as, as, uh, as calling him here. So uh, please be in prayer about that. and Please be here for that. And please try to come for the... Uh, uh, 3.30 meeting as well. All right. Uh, prayer concerns. Uh, please uh, remember 
uh, our brother Wayne Robinson. Wayne's having some uh, heart issues. He is uh, getting ready for some procedures at uh, at Rex Hospital, I believe is where he'll be going. Uh, they're going to be doing some. Uh, they're going to be doing some uh, uh, stuff to to kind of help him get straightened out. So please be in prayer for the doctors and all that's got to happen there. Please be in prayer for Wayne. Uh, don't know all the dates and times just yet, but uh, we do know he's going to be having some procedures to get some stuff uh, uh, unclogged and kind of straightened out and that kind of thing. So please be in prayer for him. And, and let's be in prayer for, for Ann as well because uh, she is uh, uh, with him uh, in all of this and, and going to the doctor's appointments and those things. So very stressful time for, for both of them. But um, we just we, we know that they know that uh, God's got them. And uh, we're just going to keep praying that up, okay? All right, also, let's remember uh, MC and Mary Donna Clary. Uh, Miss Mary Donna's still doing dialysis treatment, so we need to lift her up, and we need to lift them both up as they uh, navigate this this new part of their life and dealing with that and and uh, just uh, pray for uh, peace and, and uh, uh, courage and all the things that they need uh, as, she, as she goes through these treatments. Let's remember Janet and Gilbert. Uh, Hilliard, let's remember Barbara K. Stalins and Robert Stalins. Uh, let's remember uh, Debbie Riggin. Debbie is uh, battling breast cancer. She's just finished up a round of chemo and uh, now she's doing radiation and uh, she's doing well. And, uh, you know, um, just want to lift her up and continue to pray for her health to stay good and strong as she battles this cancer. And, um, so we want to remember her. We want to remember Joyce and Royce Perkinson uh, and that whole family. They've been dealing with some sickness over the last few weeks. And, uh, of course, uh, also Joyce is dealing with some things with cancer. So we certainly want to remember her and, and all of that family. We want to remember their daughter-in-law and son, uh, Brad and Jill. Uh, they're expecting and uh, expecting twins. And, of course, with the, with some Sickness and stuff going on, we just pray for good health and uh, a good pregnancy and, and uh, a healthy uh, a healthy uh, delivery and, and just all good things for them. They're expecting twins, and uh, we're really excited for them, and we're just praying for them, and we want you to pray for them as well. Um, we want to remember our brother, Benny Hilliard. Let's remember Benny and Catherine and all of that family. Uh, Benny, is, uh, he has been fighting cancer for a good while now. And uh, he just finished up another round of chemo. I understand he's getting kind of spunky again. He's finished up that chemo and he's feeling good. He's got some energy. Let's just pray for uh, good energy and uh, God will just strengthen him and encourage him. We mostly just want to ask for prayers of healing and uh, that the uh, Lord would just uh, be with all of that family and encouraging all of them and, and give them the tools and things that they need to be able to help him as he fights uh, this cancer. All right, um, let's remember the family of uh, Brent Montgomery. Uh, he's the highway patrolman over in the Henderson area. He he um, he lost his battle uh, with COVID, uh, but uh, you know I don't want to. I don't think about it as a as a, a a lost battle because we know that God won in that, and Brent is uh, with his Lord and Savior, and uh, he is victorious in that today and i know it's a loss for the family so let's lift that family up and remember them and uh, i know that uh, there was a lot of a, a lot of uh, community effort prayers all kind of things that that uh, were going on there and look uh, all that was not for any for nothing it it, it was not for nothing because um, you know it, it brought us it brought a community closer together uh, it brought a family uh, encouragement and uh, strength, and we know again that God won in all of that. And if God won, then Brent won because he is he is uh, standing with his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So let's remember that family. Uh, I know there's probably some others that I have not thought of, and I apologize if I missed anybody. Uh, but please continue to call us here at the church. Let us know the things that are going on so we can update our praises and prayers and uh, all of those things that we can keep you updated on those things too. All right. So um, let's uh, begin our time together uh, by going to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. And 
Lord, we do lift up those that are dealing with um, cancer. Lord, those who are dealing with treatments and Lord, with chemo and radiation, and Lord, with just all kind of different things, Lord, we just lift them up to you. Lord God, we pray for every part of their situation. Lord, you know what they need. Lord, you know how they need it. You know when they need it. Lord, you know that, um, that um, Lord, you know that the medicine can be used, the science, uh, uh, Lord, whatever it is. But Lord, we know too that we serve an almighty God, a God with a healing hand. And Lord God, we just ask for healing for all of those who are dealing with uh, sickness. Lord, we just ask that you work and move in those things, Lord, healing. And uh, Lord, just uh, uh, encouraging, Lord, giving courage, uh, whatever it takes, Lord. We just ask that you would uh, would do those things. And Lord, we just thank you for including us in your work and in your plan uh, in the lives of your people. And Father, we just ask you work and move in those things. And thank you for bringing us along. Lord, we pray for the family who has lost a loved one. Lord, we know that there's been many uh, who have lost loved ones in this pandemic due to complications of COVID. And Lord, we just pray for this family specifically, Lord, as they have struggled. And Lord, in this thing, and Lord, we know there are other families. Uh, Lord, it's uh, a lot of families. And Lord, we just lift all of them up. Those that those, Lord, that didn't lose loved ones, but Lord, they have, uh, they're having long-lasting side effects from the virus. Lord, we pray for, for complete and total healing uh, from this virus. And Lord, we just ask that you would in, in, uh, encourage these families, Lord. And, and Lord, just hold them up in your arms and love them and take care of them. Father God, we ask that you would, Lord, just uh, help us tonight. Lord, open our hearts and our minds, Lord, that we would see your thoughts and ideas and your words and in your scriptures this evening. Father, we ask that you would just, uh, Lord, help us to be encouraged uh, in your words and, and, Lord, in your truth. Lord, we pray that you would uh, just help us along the way, Lord, that we might be encouraged, and Lord, that we might encourage others as we go along the way. And Father, we most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for that perfect and precious gift of salvation that he gave us on Calvary's cross. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So um, if you've been joining us on Wednesday night, you know that we've been looking at a word, and that word is priorities, okay? And the uh, the word priorities is spelled P-R-I-O-R-I-T-I-E-S. And um, so far, we have covered the letter P which stands for prayer. We have covered the uh, letter R, which stands for review. We have covered the letter I, and that letter stood for inventory. The letter O stands for order, and then we have the letter R, which stands for resist. We have the letter I again, and uh, that letter I stands for input. We have the letter T in the word priorities. Uh, and that letter T stands for take. Take advantage of the time God gives us, okay? And then we had, uh, last week, we had the letter I. Again, we have a couple of I's in, uh, a few I's in this word priorities. And last week, our letter I stood for the word identify, all right? So this week, we have the letter E. And the letter E this week is going to stand for experience, okay? Today, we come to the next to the last letter in the word priority. So uh, we're, we're, we're winding down. We're on the short rows uh, of our study in this word priorities. I want to talk to you about a spiritual discipline that has become almost um, almost extinct. We just don't, we, we don't practice it anymore. We don't, uh, we don't take time. Uh, to recognize it, I guess, maybe a, a better way to say that. Uh, in, in this whiz-bang world that we live in, that everything's at our fingertips and technology is all over the place uh, with more uh, gadgets and more things to help us to 
be more organized and more efficient and uh, to help us to do multitasking. I think there's some things that have kind of fell off of our radar a little bit. You know, with our cell phones all abuzz and uh, text and instant messaging and social media and uh, fo- social media is at full strength, not to mention Corona, the coronavirus with its social distancing and please, uh, no groups uh, uh, gathering. And all of these things are drawing our attention away from flesh and blood people. It's, it's, it's causing us to be pushed apart uh, every day uh, with distance in between us, farther and farther. Uh, it, it's causing us to be pushed away from face-to-face uh, meeting. And it, it be, it's become almost impossible to just sit down and enjoy life with each other. Uh, not not close, not having that handshake or that hug or uh, just uh, being uh, close enough to, to sit down and just have a nice, quiet conversation with each other. So our scripture for... Our study tonight comes out of the Ecclesiastes. I'd like for you to please uh, turn to Ecclesiastes in your Bible. Uh, chapter 3, we're going to be looking at verses 12 through 13. I hope you have your Bible. Again, this is Bible study, right? I hope you have your Bible and, and maybe even a, a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen to maybe be able to take a note, not because anything that I would say would be noteworthy, but I hope that God will speak to your heart this evening, and, and there'll be something that you'll want to write down that will remind you of some things as you go through this week and in the upcoming weeks. So let's jump in. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. This is verse 12 and 13. So I concluded, there is nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. And people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are gifts from God, you know, being together, being together and um, being happy, enjoying ourselves uh, as we go along in this life. That's a gift from God. OK, and uh, he wants us to he wants us to have those things. And I'm so thankful that he loves us in that way, that he wants us to have joy and happiness in our lives. You know, as I read that passage, it talked about he used the word. What did he say? Uh, and people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor. I, I'm sure there must have been some Baptists uh, somewhere along in this group because uh, eating and drinking, you know, we know that, uh, well, how does it go? We know that uh, fellowship is just a code word for food, right, in the Baptist uh, in the Baptist church. And we can laugh and joke about that because we love fellowship, and I do enjoy the fellowship. I enjoy uh, people, and I enjoy being able to talk to people. I enjoy hugs and handshakes and all of those things. And we know that over this last year, uh, we've been so limited in being able to do so much of those things that we call fellowship. Well, that's where this letter E comes into play uh, in our word tonight. Our letter is E, and it comes um, it comes in as a, a challenge, a challenge to experience. That's our word for tonight, experience. We need to experience each moment and each season to its absolute fullest, all right? Uh, I know sometimes we get so caught up in all of the busyness of trying to do all the things that we have to do, all the things that we're called to do by so many different things that sometimes uh, we don't we do not do those things to the fullest. We do just enough to get by and get on to the next thing. And that is not how God wants us to to live in those things, damn. Look, I know that's that, what do we always say? That's easy preaching and hard living. And I, I recognize that. But I hope this evening that we can recognize too, there are times, there are things in our life that are, our lives that are worth slowing down and, and, and getting the fullest of those things that God wants us to have. All right. So here's a thought. To be all there. How many times are we not all there? Uh, We have so many things going on uh, that, you know, we just have time to kind of jump in for a second. And even when we're physically there, we're not really there. You know, I know that happens uh, in our church life as well, in in our our worship service. I know there are times when uh, folks come to church 
And they are here physically in the sanctuary, but there's so many things going on in life that they don't have a clue what the preacher said. They don't have a clue what the scripture was. They may have heard bits and pieces, but they've got so many other things on their mind that, that they're, they're here, but they're not here, right? And I know that uh, you know, life just gets that way sometimes, but that's one of those things that we do as we gather together on Sunday morning, uh, that we need to leave uh, those things that are taking our attention away from the Lord. We need to leave those things at the foot of the cross. We need to leave them at the altar. You know, I've often thought, and I know I've shared this with you before, and I still believe it, uh, and, and, and I think that uh, we need to start doing it. But at the beginning of the service, you know, we always welcome everyone and we do some things at, uh, at, at the beginning of the service. But one of the things I believe we ought to do is we need to take time as we come into God's house, as we settle in to hear God's message on Sunday morning. Before we start that, uh, that time, uh, we need to come to God's altar and we need to lay the things that are interfering with us hearing from God. We need to lay the burdens of this life and this world down so that he can have our complete attention. I, again, I'm not talking about the preacher. I'm not talking about uh, his, his presence in the pulpit, but I'm talking about God's presence in your life. Now, I, you know, I, 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 I try to, uh, as I step in that pulpit on every Sunday, I always try to ask God to remove my opinions as a pastor, as a preacher, and to fill my mind and my heart with his thoughts and his words, uh, that that's what you would hear, uh, nothing from me. So again, as we do that, I, I pray that we would just uh, be able to lay down the things of God, uh, the things of the world, so that God can have our complete and undivided attention. So I want to challenge you this Sunday as we gather together uh, that. Um, that is John uh, Riddle uh, is coming to bring the message for us. As John brings that message, that you would lay aside the things of this world. And I know that's hard. There's some big things in our lives that are uh, going around and around and uh, calling our attention away from, from the Lord. But I want to challenge you to, to be all there, wherever you are. Uh, Sunday morning, Monday morning, Monday night, wherever it is that you are, be all there. You don't want to be in 12 different places at one time. You know, physically we can't be, but in our mind, boy, we can be a lot of places at the same time. And that is not how God wants us to live. He wants us to live in the fullness of that very moment where we are. So I, I challenge you to do that, to try it uh, as we move along. I want us to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 again. I want us to look at starting in verse 1 because here, God makes a, a clear statement to us. He says, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. I know this is a familiar verse, but, you know, sometimes we need to hear this. And let's look at it together. Let's read these verses and let's see how God encourages us and speaks to us through these of through these verses in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, starting in verse 1, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to reach, I'm sorry, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. So whatever, whatever it's time for you to be doing in your life right now, in this, in this very moment, do it. Do it with all your heart. Give everything you've got to this time in your life right now. Give everything that you've got to it. And look, let's do it. 
for God's glory, right? For God's glory. That's why we're doing anything that we're doing. We should be doing it for his glory. Now, if you're doing something and you know that it's selfish and you know it's not for God's glory, well, I would say that's probably a pretty good indication that you don't need to be doing it. So leave that alone. Grab hold of something that's going to glorify God and do it with all your heart that he would be glorified in that thing that you're doing. Look, if it's time to work, then let's get busy, right? If it's time to work, let's get busy and put in a full day's labor. Let's do it. Uh, let's do that labor, that work uh, to the very best of our ability. Not slacking off for one minute, but look, look, just working and getting it done. Look, if it's time to take a break, then let's take a break. Look, and when we take that break, we need to we need to be thankful uh, for that moment. We need to be in prayerful gratitude to God for giving us that time to have a break. And look, when we take a break from things, we don't have to concentrate on a task or a labor, but we have time to look around and see the people and be attentive to the people that are around you and the things that they need or the needs that they have in their lives because God has granted us a break. And we can we can take that break and be in prayerful gratitude to God and be attentive to the people that are around. If it's time to rejoice, let's rejoice. Let's go. Let's go in celebration of the good things and the blessings of the Lord that he's given us, that he's placed in our lives. Let's go and uh, and share those blessings. Look, if it's a time to weep, uh, then we need to weep hard. We need to we need to weep hard, just like with everything else. God says to, to to give it everything you've got. And if there's weeping in your life, if there's if there's a hardship in your life, then let's weep hard. Pour out to Him the pain uh, that you're enduring, the pain that you're experiencing right now. Pour it out to Him. The repentance of uh, the repentance, the repentance, his conviction is calling for you. If there's something in your life that you know shouldn't be in your life, if you know that it's something that's wrong in your life and you need to get rid of it and give it up and you need to turn away from it, then do that. Do that because the convicting of the Holy Spirit is calling you to turn away from that and go throw your arms around a dear friend. There's somebody in your life who you need to throw your arms around. Maybe it's a dear friend. Maybe it's a family member who's hurting and needs you close. And they need you in their life without distraction. That means that, look, you, you need to give them your total 100% attention. You know, I, I realize uh, I'm not so good at that sometimes. I should be much better at it, especially as a, a pastor. But, you know, I, I fall really short in that area sometimes uh, because, you know, we sit down and uh, we sit down with the intentions of listening, listening and sometimes we do more talking we, than we do listening. But they need, look, and that's another thing. You know, we all know that we have issues and things going on in our lives that we're carrying around our very own selves. And look, when we sit down to encourage someone, let's lay the things down. Uh, that would distract us from listening and hearing our brother or sister and uh, and, and give them 100% of our attention. Look, if you're married, you need to cherish uh, you need to cherish your mate. You know, as I was thinking about that uh, undistracted part of that, I know uh, Debbie, Debbie might get a little upset with me for sharing this, but there's sometimes when she comes home and she's been at school all day and Look, something's happened. They've changed something, or they're doing something different, uh, or, or there's more things added into their responsibilities. And she starts telling me about those things, and I start listening. And I know she's upset, and if she's upset, then I tend to get upset, and I start talking about, well, you know, you just need to go in there and tell them this, this, and this, and look, you shouldn't have to put up with that, and you shouldn't have to be responsible for these things, and you just need to go in there and blah, blah, blah. And look, you know, and then sometimes she tells me, you know, Bobby, look, I really don't need for you to fix the problem for me. I just need for you to listen to me. You know, if we have a, if we have a spouse, you know, sometimes they really do need our undivided attention. And we just need to listen to what they've got to say. Now, she doesn't say that in a bad spirit or in a mean way. But sometimes she's just telling me, look, Bobby, I, I need somebody just to listen. 
You know, I don't need you to, I don't need you to fix it for me. I just need you to listen. And, you know, that's a, that's a great lesson. I think I've, I've learned that lesson. I still, sometimes I, I don't always do very good at it, but I'm reminded of it now. And I think I am a little bit better at it than I used to be. But uh, I think that might be something that we can learn along the way. You look, if you have children, we need to enjoy our children. Um, you know, I, I know that that can be a really busy part of our lives with our children and the things that they do. Uh, I, I know that in my life, when my children were little, uh, heck, I was in the middle of a, a career and, and other things that were going on. And I'm sure I didn't uh, give them all the attention that I should have, undivided attention that I should have. I'm so blessed to have uh, a wonderful uh, son, a wonderful daughter-in-law. God has blessed me with a wonderful uh, grandson. I have a wonderful daughter, and uh, I'm thankful that I have learned to, to slow down and to listen to them. I probably don't listen again like I should sometimes, uh, but I, I love to uh, watch uh, my my son and my daughter all being as Stephanie as as they're raising Jackson and uh, the attention that they give him and uh, you know it's it's uh it's not bad attention sometimes you know they need attention and sometimes uh, Jackson will come to him he's three he's three years old and 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 there'll be something that he's trying to do and you know I, I'm thankful that sometimes they they let him struggle a little bit. Uh, with that thing that he's trying to do because that's learning. They don't just rush right over and, and fix it, but they're always right there to catch him, you know, if he if he gets in trouble. And, you know, what a picture of how God is in our lives. He's, he's always right there. Uh, he doesn't always rush right in to fix it and make it exactly like we want it to be, but he allows us to work in that thing, to sometimes struggle even in that thing, that we could learn a little bit more about who he is in our lives. If you have children, I pray that you'll just take the time to enjoy your children. And look, uh, sons and daughters, uh, especially if you're older, if you're older and you're uh, maybe high school, college, uh, maybe uh, young uh, young married sons and daughters, uh, also I want to encourage you to take time to enjoy your parents too. Uh, to remember, uh, you know, that uh, while you're grown and you're on your own, you're out there doing your thing, uh, they're still your mom and dad. They still pray for you. They still worry about you. They still want you to have the best things in life. And uh, sometimes they need to hear from you. Uh, they just want to hear your voice, okay? So enjoy, enjoy your parents if you're if you have uh, if you have older parents if you if you're if you're older and uh, you you're not right there you don't live in the same house with your folks. Remember to enjoy your folks as well. Look, I want to tell you something. Don't 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 squander. Don't squander. Don't let it be for nothing. Uh, the present, the time that we have, we only have one present. This very moment is this only moment that we have and then it's gone it's, it's it's something that's in the past and and we're and we're going on to the next thing wishing for a different season uh is something we should not do we need to live in the season that god has us in right now that may be a really tough time right now maybe there's something going on in your life that and you know you're saying lord why why am i dealing with this or why is this happening in my life and you know i wish i had some some just some great words of wisdom that would just fix all of that and you wouldn't have to deal with that, but I don't. But what I do know is whatever it is that you're dealing with, God knows that you're dealing with it. And God is not letting you be in that thing all by yourself, even though it may feel like you're all by yourself. God is right there with you. He's going through every hurt and every ache and every pain. And um, he's going to use that. He's going to use that that you'll be blessed, and he's going to use that for uh, to be glorified in it for his glory. You know, we can't see all of that uh, sometimes. Very seldom can we ever see it when we're in the midst of whatever it is that's going on. But look, we don't need to get stuck in, in, in past, in the past things. We don't need to get stuck in past failures because, you know, that's where Satan, Satan lives in past failures, our past failures. He 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 doesn't want you to forget that you messed up in this particular thing. He doesn't want you to forget that you didn't do so good in a particular area. And he wants to keep 
bringing that back and piling it on your back. He doesn't want you to forget that. And look, so we don't need to get stuck in the past. And we don't need to let uh, the old memories of things that uh, uh, happened in our lives to be things that weighed us down and hold us down. And look, here's another thing. We don't want to get lost in future dreams. We don't want to get lost in future anxieties and things that we just don't even know uh, how they're going to turn out, but yet we, we're we already calculating and trying to figure out how they're going to be, uh, what they could be, right? Well, God knows what they're going to be already. And so if we'll just look to him to guide us in what he wants them to be in our lives, he'll lead us to those things. So let's don't get hung up in the past and let's don't live our lives reaching for the future that's not here yet and the trouble that may be coming in that future as well. Trouble will get here fast enough, but God's blessings are in being obedient to the Lord. Life is filled with difficulties and life is uh, life is filled with perplexities, right? It's not always easy. We don't always know what the right turn or the left turn or when to stop or slow down or speed up or what those things are. It's 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 complex. It's uh it's hard. And then uh, King Solomon concluded uh, this. He said, "And there is much." nobody can understand. This is King Solomon. We know King Solomon was a wise man, right? Uh, <clears throat> and he made this statement, and there is not much, there is, let me see if I can say this right, and there is much nobody can understand, let alone control. Even though, you know, we want to be in control or we think that we can be in control, we can't be in control. Uh, you know, we uh, we need to let the Lord be in control of our lives. We need to follow him, and uh, he will always lead us in a way that is right. Uh, so often, you know, we, we want to take control. We think we take control, and we, we, we run headlong down a path that's not going to end up very well. And uh, God can see that it's not going to end up any well, but he'll let us go on because he knows sometimes we're hard-headed and we have to learn that way. And when we learn that way, there are consequences that we're going to pay for along the way. We're going to get bumped and bruised. And um, and look, even even along the road following him, there's going to be bumps and bruises sometimes. And um, But we know that those bumps and bruises that are on his road are going to be to help us along the way. You know, life is filled with difficulties. This life, though, that we live, this life is God's gift. Have you ever stopped just to think about that? Every day that we're able to get up and live life, this life is God's gift to us. And he wants us to enjoy this life. He doesn't want us to just get by, scrape by, uh, to just go through life, but he wants us to enjoy this life. And he wants us to use this life for his glory. He wants to. He wants us to to realize that the things that he does for us are his gift to us. This whole life, every breath that we take, every time our heart beats, uh, look, that's a gift from God. You, uh, you're right here, right now, wherever that is. You're right here, right now. We need to live like it. We need to live like. Uh, we are right here, right now. This life is a gift of God, and we need to live it like it's a gift. Look, I want to close tonight by sharing with you something. Um, a life without Jesus. A life without Jesus Christ is a life not lived completely. You know, if you happen to be watching this this evening, uh, you found our website by uh, you were just flipping through. Uh, it wasn't by mistake. God led you here. But look, I want to tell you something. If you're living your life without Jesus Christ, um, then you're living a life that's not complete. Now, you may be saying, well, preacher, look, man, I've got everything I need. I've got plenty of money. I don't want for anything. I've got savings account. I've got CDs. I've got cars. I've got two or three homes in different places. I've got lots of assets. There's not a thing in this world that I'm lacking or missing 
But I'm going to tell you, if you're, if you're lacking a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're missing the most and greatest thing that you could absolutely have in this life. I want you to know that all that money that's in the bank, all those portfolio things that you have, all the cars and boats and houses and uh, all of the things that you think are riches of this world, they're someday going to pass away. They're going to be, they're going to turn to rust. They're going to turn to dust. They're going to go back to the earth. They're going to be, uh, they're going to be lost. But your relationship with Jesus Christ can never be lost if you know him as Lord and Savior. Because see, you're not the one that keeps that relationship. It's him. When you put yourself in his hands, when you call upon him and allow him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. That's something that can never pass away. That's something that will never end. He's in control of that. So look, I just want to make that statement again. A life without Jesus Christ is a life not lived completely. My prayer for you this evening is that you'll have a life that you can live that is complete. And the only way that can be is to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. A life without Jesus Christ. It's a life living in the past or running to the future. Uh, you're, you're always reaching back for something that you had in the past or you're trying to race to the future, but you're never finding that thing that makes your life whole and complete. And the reason is, it's because it's without Jesus. And without Jesus, your life will never be complete or whole. If that's you, if that's you tonight, then Jesus is what you're looking for. I know right now in your heart, you're saying, well, I know there's something missing in my life. There's something I don't have. I've got a lot of things. I've got a lot of material possessions. I've got, I've got health and I, I, I've got cars and money. I've got a great family. Look, I'm a good guy. I've got a great job. I make, I make plenty of money. I've got all the, all the things that this world says makes me successful. But there seems to be something else that's just missing in my life. That thing that's missing in your life is a relationship with Jesus Christ. That you can say that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. When you know Jesus Christ personally, when you know him as the Lord and Savior of your life, and you live for him faithfully, you can experience. We're back to our word, right? We're back to our word experience. You can experience fullness of joy and pleasure in, in this life and forevermore, not just here on this earth, but in all eternity. Because without Christ Jesus, look, your life on this earth is going to end at some point in time. We know that, we know that this is uh, just a temporary place, this earthly life. And when we when we uh, leave this earth and, and, and we continue our journey into eternity, look, there's only two destinations in eternity. There's a destination without Christ Jesus. And that destination is going to be a place called hell. And look, in hell, there's going to be torment and there's going to be, uh, there's going to be hurt. There's going to be tears. There's going to be thirst that can't be quenched. There's going to be death that's cried out for, but you won't be able to have it. You're going to want to die, but you won't be able to die. He's going to say, preacher, don't tell me all that stuff because I don't, I don't want to hear that. You're just trying to intimidate me. You're trying to scare me. No, I'm telling you because I love you. And I want you to know that a life without Jesus Christ, an eternity without Jesus Christ is simply hell. And hell is not a place that you're going to want to go. And I don't want you to go to hell. And I know that you don't want to go to hell because hell is going to be a separation from Jesus Christ. You'll never be able to get from there to heaven. Uh, it's going to be an eternal destination. All right. So again, that's not to that's not to scare. It's to encourage you to seek Jesus Christ right now while he can be found, while he is available to you. If you're living, you're breathing your heart's beating, then Jesus Christ is available to you. And all you have to do is call upon the name of Jesus. So I, I ask you right now, if you don't know Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life, to right now, uh, we, all, we all have been to this place. Every single person on this earth, uh, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You need to recognize that you're a sinner and you've fallen short of God's glory. But you can change 
You can change that. You can't change the sin, but you can have forgiveness of that sin. And you can call upon the name of Jesus and you will be saved. Okay? So if you need Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life tonight, I ask you to call upon him and know him in a different way. He'll come and he will change you and he will change your life. I want to close with a psalm. It's Psalm 16. I want you to turn over to Psalm 16 in your Bible, and I want you to look at these words. In Psalm 16, we're going to look at verse 11, and this is we're going to close with this tonight, okay? We hadn't done a lot of verses tonight, so I want to close with this. Psalm 16, verse 11, and it says, You will show me the way of my life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. That's right. That other eternity, that eternity with Christ Jesus is to spend eternity with him in his heaven. You know, it says in our scriptures that heaven is going to be a place where there'll be no sadness and there'll be no tears of sadness in heaven. Uh, that there'll be, that we'll be able to sit at the foot of Jesus. We'll be able to see those that have gone on before us uh, in this Christian faith uh, those who have believed in Christ Jesus will be united again, will be together in eternity with him. And look, we don't have to start uh, living eternity when we leave this earth. We can start that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And uh, we can live in the promise and the truth of that salvation today. You know, I'm so thankful for the time that we got to spend together this evening. I pray that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you made that decision tonight, and you've asked Him to come and live into your come and live in your heart uh, for now and forever. And look, here's the thing: again, you don't have the ability. I don't have the ability to keep that, but Christ Jesus does. He has that ability. He uh, he will he will change you, and you will be forever changed. And there's nothing uh, of this earth. Above the earth, below the earth, on the earth, anything created is what God's word says that can take you out of the hand of Jesus Christ once you place yourself there in his hand and he is your Lord and Savior. And uh, look, I'm, 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 I know I'm preaching and I'm going to stop, but that's so important. That's so important. I, I pray that I pray that you know that or maybe there's somebody in your life that you need to just share that message with, uh, that message of salvation. Look, I'm so thankful. Uh, that Jesus made us to want to be together. And I, I, I'm so thankful that uh, uh, that we're hopefully coming to a close with this pandemic and this virus and that we will be able to be back together. We'll be able to fellowship together. We'll be able to eat and drink and, and just enjoy each other. Look, I, 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 the, all, the, all of the things of social media, they just sort of seem to push us apart and uh, texting and uh, emails, they're all wonderful and good things, but uh, there's nothing that can be better than being face-to-face, eye-to-eye, uh, being able to hold uh, each other's hands, to be able to give each other a hug, all of those things. God made us that way, and God wants us to enjoy those things in this life. And I'm so thankful that we can remind each other of those things along the way. Let's pray together as we close our time tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much again for the time we could spend together. Father, thank you for blessing our time together. Lord God, I pray that someone's been encouraged along the way tonight. Lord, I pray for that one maybe that, that ended up on our website. And Lord, that they heard uh, that there's a man uh, named Jesus. And he's not just a man, but he is fully man and he is fully God. And he is able to save us from our sin. And Lord, that he is able to, to, to promise us a, 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 an eternal life in his heaven if we accept him and know him as Lord and Savior of our lives. And Lord, I pray for that one that heard that. I pray for that one who made that decision. Lord, I pray for that one who is who is thinking on those things right now, Lord, and I pray that you'd allow the Holy Spirit to just speak to their heart and draw them, Lord, uh, into salvation, unto salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray as we close our time tonight, Lord God, that you would lead us to be closer together, united in our work, as a church, as Macon Baptist Church, and Lord, as we uh, go out into this world, Lord, that you'll give us a boldness and a courage to proclaim your gospel 
to a lost and dying world. Father God, we thank you tonight for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for that pref perfect and precious gift of salvation that he has given us on Calvary's cross. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.